There is no time to waste. In this video, we're going to try and get through eight of JWST's recent discoveries in eight minutes. So let's dive straight in. Links to articles where you can read more about each of them will be in the description, as we'll only be able to scratch the surface of each one. Let's start relatively close to home with some new information about our largest solar system neighbor, Jupiter. JWST has imaged Jupiter a few times before, but this time it's used its near-infrared spectrograph NERSPEC to study the upper atmosphere of Jupiter, above the famous Great Red Spot. Now, the spot is actually white in this JWST image, thanks to the color they choose for their images, but that's not important here. What is cool is that they were able to study the upper atmosphere, high above the Great Red Spot in unprecedented detail, and although they expected it to be kind of boring, it was anything but. The team was surprised to see that this high part of the atmosphere hosts a variety of intricate structures, including dark arcs and bright spots. This is likely to partly be driven by incoming starlight, along with another ingredient like gravity waves, which are also likely contributing to the complicated dynamics we can see at play here. Just a note that gravity waves aren't gravitational waves. These are more like waves crashing on a beach, but in the upper atmosphere, rather than gravitational waves, which are space-time being stretched by merging objects or something similar. If gravitational waves like that were causing weather on Jupiter, well, that would be the discovery of the decade and maybe even the century. Next up, we have some stars, and more stars than we expected. JWST recently imaged a star system called WL20, and we thought it was three stars. But it turns out one of those stars is actually twins, and JWST's incredible resolution allowed us to see both of them, along with impressive disks and jets around those stars. Admittedly, the new image doesn't actually look like this. This is an artist's impression of the discovery, but the real image is still pretty awesome. You can see in older images that it does look like one star, but using JWST data definitely confirms that two stars are actually there. So by using JWST, we just learned of the existence of a brand new star. That's pretty cool. They combined Webb with ALMA, a group of more than 60 radio telescopes in Chile, to see the disks around both stars, and based on the age of the stars, it's possible that planets are actually forming in those disks already around each star. The system itself actually lives in the Rho Opiuki system, something that JWST has imaged before and we've discussed in this video up here. But anyway, speaking of planets and disks, JWST has studied one of those too. Using the mid-infrared instrument MIRI, it broke down the light it received from the disk around a young star called ISO Cal 147 to get a spectrum of that light. Spectra can tell us about what elements and molecules are present in the target, and here it told us some fascinating things. The disk around this young star contains a lot of hydrocarbons, and this spectrum is the richest hydrocarbon chemistry ever seen in a protoplanetary disk. It includes the first ever detection of ethane outside of our solar system, along with detections of ethylene, propene, and a methyl radical called CH3. Rock on! These molecules are likely to go on to form planets around this star, and who knows, one day life may even develop around this distant star too. Ooh, did someone say star? Yes. Was it me? Also yes. Well, let's look at some more stars then, shall we? This is possibly my favorite image that we're looking at today, and it also represents a groundbreaking discovery made by JWST. This is the Serpens Nebula, a famous stellar nursery where many young stars are forming. There are some amazing things to see in this image, from these unusual aligned jets erupting from newborn stars to the so-called bat's shadow, through to hundreds of beautiful stars sat amongst the beautiful clouds and structures made from the abundant space dust and gas. The colors, textures, and shapes here are all amazing, and I think this patch of space, birthing new stars at an amazing rate, is just absolutely awesome. Now let's go from some nearby stars to loads of incredibly distant stars. We have a new deep field image from JWST. It shows a massive cluster of galaxies in the center, and thousands of more distant galaxies in the background too. Just take a moment to enjoy how beautiful this one is. An especially awesome thing here is that the foreground cluster is so massive that it deforms space-time itself, leading to a phenomenon we call gravitational lensing. This means that light from some of these distant background galaxies gets warped, producing these stunning arcs as galaxy shapes are distorted by the lensing. 
Also, some light gets magnified in this process, meaning that we can see objects that would normally be too faint to see. In particular, in these arcs here, we can pick out clusters of stars from the incredibly distant universe. These clusters were already gravitationally bound together, just 460 million years after the Big Bang. And these are the earliest known star clusters ever, and is such an impressive discovery that wouldn't have been possible without JWST. What time are we at? Eesh, we better keep things quick. From distant stars to an exploding star, this is a brand new look at the Crab Nebula, the result of a supernova that was visible from Earth a thousand years ago in the year 1054. Again, JWST has imaged the nebula previously, but has now used the spectroscope onboard MIRI to better understand the exact elements that are in the nebula. They saw nickel and iron in the spectrum, and measured the amount of each one. This was done in an attempt to better understand exactly how the star that exploded ended its life, and to try to say exactly what kind of supernova this was. Sadly, there wasn't any smoking gun evidence for any particular type, and it could have been either a core collapse or an electron capture supernova. But at least we get to see this beautiful image while we wait for more research to be done on this. Let's end this list with a bang. Well, actually, lots of bangs. Using data from the Jays Deep Survey, a team has discovered 10 times more supernovae in the distant universe than we've ever seen before. Every circle here is around a star that exploded when the universe was incredibly young, and some of these are the most distant of their type of supernova ever seen, and they can help us learn about how the universe has evolved over time. The very final discovery in this video full of stunning images is this picture of a fuzzy red blob. JWST has once again smashed the record for the most distant galaxy ever seen. This one is at something we call Redshift 14, meaning that we're seeing it as it was when the universe was only 219 million years old. This is an absolutely incredible achievement, but I suspect it won't be the last time, or even the last time for a while, that we're talking about JWST breaking this record, since it's so good at detecting faint, faraway galaxies. So keep your eye out for the new most distant galaxy very soon, probably. It might even have happened between me filming and uploading this video. Right, that's it for today and JWST's latest discoveries. Do I have time for an outro? No. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!